It's a snow globe evening on campus in stores. A good night to be watching basketball. And inside Gamble Pavilion, we've got a good one for you. Two longtime Big East rivals squaring off in a battle of the bigs. It's DePaul visiting UConn live here on SN Live. And hi, everybody. With Megan Como, I'm Alan Best with Maria Marino joins us shortly. And I kind of teased the headline. If you like post play in this one, two of the best in the nation are going to square off inside the paint tonight. UConn's Aaliyah Edwards against DePaul's Anissa Morrow. Let's start with Aaliyah Edwards for UConn. What's she bring to the floor tonight? Gosh, what hasn't she brought to the floor all season long? I mean, she has been so consistent. She's been so dominant. I love when she gets the ball on the low post. There's a confidence, and she plays with a purpose this year. Gets, you know, that dribbling to the basket is a new part of her game, as is that consistent 15, 17 foot jumper. Her defense is outstanding. Great footwork. She's not committing fouls. She's keeping herself in the game, and her numbers, including percentage, impressive. So Aaliyah Edwards to get a very good test tonight because her counterpart in the paint is Anissa Morrow for DePaul. And our Nissan keys to the game will show you just what a force she's been for the Blue Demons. I mean, she is she is so difficult to guard. She scores so consistently. I mean, look at those numbers. 25 points, 12 rebounds, 16 double-doubles. She can also defend. She is a relentless force in the lane and can rebound as well as anybody in the country. Be interesting to see how each side defends the other and how they attack the other. There's a look at Anissa Morrow for DePaul. Our starting lineups presented by Subaru of New England, the familiar five for UConn. Plus, they do get Ayanna Patterson back tonight, so eight now available for the Huskies tonight. And the five for DePaul, they're only experienced five players. They've had their share of injuries as well. The other four they bring with them here are all true freshmen. Our starting lineup is presented by Subaru of New England. Doug Bruno recently inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. His 37th year heading the Blue Demons record. Squaring off tonight against his good friend Gino Orient. And Bruno knows his team well, they face it tonight. It's a big challenge to beat UConn in stores. And there's uh, the other Hall of Famer, Gino Oriema, getting set to try and keep his record perfect against Bruno and DePaul. In the air. And DePaul actually won that tip. Morrow slapped it forward. There's an eye of Peoples. It's blocked. Lucky no foul there against Nika Mule. It's one of the subplots I'm going to be very interested to see in this one, Meg, is how this game is officiated and how physical it gets. There's Lopez Seneschal. Got it. That's three. That's a critical start for Lopez and the Huskies. And the worst thing for the Blue Demons, Doug Bruno told me, they need to start quickly and not get down and have that starry-eyed look about them against the Huskies in, in the Gamble home court environment. There's a three from, with the player we just talked about, her incredible post game, Anissa Morrow. And the three-point shot is, an, is a new part of her arsenal this year. Griffin. A little strong on the two. Morrow will get the rebound. You see a little zone defense out there from DePaul. And Jory Allen. Shot doesn't go. One and done for DePaul. That's going to be a travel. A little drag of the pivot foot on the part of Dorka Juhas. So DePaul coming in with injury problems of its own. Again, just the five experienced players for Doug Bruno. And then four true freshmen. And then a little conversation going on between Fatu Sisuko Stevens. And Doug Bruno. That's going to result in a larger discussion. Jeffrey Smith and Polani Spurlock Welsh, the other officials on the crew tonight. Apparently, the conversation is about the alternating possession arrow from the opening tip, pointing in well, favor of. DePaul got the tip. Right, pointing so, in favor of Utah. Yeah, the, the arrow should stay here. Where it is, it should stay with UConn. Gotta appreciate the effort. Start early, stay consistent. 
Darion Rogers inside. This is Jory Allen. Back out to Rogers. Rogers, the other real scoring threat for DePaul, wearing 21. Shot clock running down. Seven. Here's Allen. Kicks out to Morrow. That's going to be a three-second violation on DePaul. So when Jory Allen, when she kicked that ball out tomorrow, she had to make an effort to get out of the lane. She was camped out in there. Although I'm with Doug Bruno. I, I hate that call. <laughs> but you can't camp out. He's been very consistent about expressing displeasure with that, yes. Here is Aaliyah Edwards on Morrow. Morrow flops, and Edwards gets two. And it didn't seem like Edwards' forward motion created Morrow to fall. I think the word flop was appropriate. Thank you. Here's Rogers defended by Griffin. Morrow with the fadeaway. No, nobody there but Nika Mule for the well, rebound for UConn. Why, yeah, I mean, that's maybe her respect for Edwards. Why fade away? Griffin around and out. Rogers throws it to Morrow in the paint. She gets the shot off with nobody in her face. Little transition defense to offense there. DePaul giving you kind of taste of its own medicine. All five of the Blue Demons points scored by Morrow. That luckily back in the hands of Mule. Griffin drives. No. Terrific cut. Just came up a little short. Nice read here by Juhas. She'll take the shot from the corner for three. It doesn't go. Morrow will get the rebound. You know, there's a part of you that wants to say, okay, why don't you set that up and run offense? But how do you tell a kid to not just go with the moment and try to knock down that three? It would have been demoralizing to DePaul if she Absolutely. made that. Here's Allen, travel. So we talked about this matchup off the top. I mean, these two are going to be, ah, there was a little right arm. A little right arm pushing off with Edwards. Lucky she didn't get the call. Right, five apiece. Lopez Seneschal for three. Two for two from long range. And that's, you know, that three-point shot is what's going to open up that defense. DePaul playing a little zone in the... keeping everyone in the lane. That's going to get fumbled away. I think, I think Edwards got a hand on it, but then Rogers hit it, knocked it out of bounds. It looked like it went off Rogers' foot. Or was it Griffin that got the hand? Yeah, Griffin. Yeah, it went off. Yeah, Griffin knocked it down, and then it went off of Rogers' foot. Griffin drives. No call. Through the contact, Aaliyah Edwards will pick up the loose ball and put it in. Right place at the right time, Aaliyah Edwards wisely not giving up on the play. Griffin with a steal. He blows, gets a hand on the ball, but they'll call a foul with the body contact. I mean, Aubrey Griffin is another one who's consistently just been playing so well. Nice active hands in the passing lane to create that steal and then gets fouled on the layup. Just can't say enough about her effort. Clean on the body, but got her on the arm. It, it, I'll say this. You better not be lazy with a pass anywhere in the vicinity of Aubrey Griffin. She is so quick to the ball. Quick and anticipates so well, always in good position, and just, just supremely athletic. Gets them both from the free throw strike. UConn on a 6-0 run in less than a minute. Dave McElaine lets it go. One of those freshmen just into the ball game for DePaul. And let it fly. Griffin couldn't quite get ahead of the defense. Juhas. Draws the contact and the foul. It'll be on Jory Allen. And will send Dorky Juhas to the free throw strike. Allen, veteran player, senior from Bedford, Indiana, who has missed the second half of a couple of recent games and then the entire last game for DePaul after getting beaten up some. So Dorka Juhas at the free throw strike for UConn. Last year when DePaul played here, a game high, 22 points, plus a team high, eight rebounds in just 25 minutes. And that was a big deal last year. Now it's what she does. She's been 
She's gotten more double doubles every day. And that's what you know. That's what they need from from Uhas too. Edwards almost got the steal. Morrow will heave up the three and miss everything. Fell over looking for a foul call. Did not get one. So a five-point UConn lead as we approach halfway through this uh, opening quarter. Morrow will go out to try and um, extend the break, leading with the timeout. Well, Doug Bruno was trying to talk to her as she was running back down the court, and she wouldn't look over. So he goes, all right, I know how you can listen to me. You'll come out and sit right next to me. Edwards, got it. 18, 19 footer for Aaliyah Edwards. Pass stolen by Griffin. Big steps, draws contact. It's going to be the second on Jory Allen quickly and leads us to a timeout halfway through quarter number one. Aliyah Edwards in the spotlight tonight. She is perfect from the floor, three for three. Doing it under the iron and from 18, 19 feet away. Halfway through quarter number one, seven point UConn lead over to Paul. Gino Ariema talking about Anissa Morrow after the Butler game Saturday. She could get 50 tomorrow. And if we guard the hell out of her, maybe we can hold her to 35. As she's one of those kids in, in the country that is just really, really, really hard to defend. Well, she has five of DePaul's eight points so far, and the player tasked with defending her tonight is Aaliyah Edwards. Maria Marino has more on Aaliyah. That's right, Alan. I asked Aaliyah, what are you most proud of so far this year in terms of your development? And she said, just being a more all-around player and having a larger role as an upperclassman, what she's been able to do with that. I feel um, that the challenges this year have actually helped Aaliyah in a way. She said, even though there's been a lot of challenges, she doesn't see that as a limitation. She sees it as an opportunity to rise to the occasion. So she's proud of how solid and consistent she's been as a team player through any ups and downs. Yeah, Maria, she was really looking forward to this matchup tonight, too, and the challenge that it presents. So out of the timeout, Morrow comes back into the ball game, and we resume with Aubrey Griffin shooting free throws for UConn. Well, you know, great players want to play other great players. And, uh, and uh, Ali Edwards is proving that she is one of the, the great players in this country, and this is a good test for her against an outstanding scorer in Anissa Morrow. I'm excited for this matchup as, as much as anybody. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch, I think, all night long, all 40 minutes. So Griffin missed the free throws, but got the rebound on the second miss. Ten to shoot for UConn. Juhas against Morrow. No. Might have gotten a little defensive help from the backside from Peoples, 22 for DePaul. Here's Macklin. Rogers has Mule got knocked down. And drains the three. Darion Rogers for DePaul, junior from Chicago. So four point Husky lead. You notice they're fronting Aaliyah Edwards down in that low post. UConn. The UConn basketball 10 on the shot clock. Edwards with six points for UConn. Lopez Seneschal with six. <laughs> Lopez Seneschal, there's going to be an offensive foul. That's going to be an illegal screen on Nika Mule. And she looked at Gino like, what? What did I do? I had to throw in a little bit of the accent. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the hand motions go and the, the whole thing, yeah. <laughs> Rogers again, defended by Griffin. Now uh, Peoples and Notre Dame transfer. McElaine, the freshman from Philadelphia. Yeah, the tough kid from Delco. 
Morrow picks up the missed shot, puts it in. Rogers still down on the floor, trying to regain her feet. Numbers for UConn, pass couldn't get through to Griffith. Now numbers for DePaul. And Rogers gets the bucket. And Mule's got to be careful. She's got one foul. She doesn't want to pick one up there. So a little DePaul run here, and it's now a two-point UConn lead. The Seneschal, oh yes, she's feeling it from outside. UConn would be wise to keep going to her. Keep feeding. Three for three from long range, and a leading scorer in the ball game early. Rogers feeds to a cutting Morrow, and it is off her hands and out of bounds. UConn basketball. This, this has been so fun to watch already. Both of these players working so hard. You see Edwards and Morrow. I mean, this is going to be an intense battle all night long. Very much. Griffin into Edwards. The quick move to the left hand and the foul. That's that turn that Aaliyah Edwards is making this year that is proving to be unstoppable. Over that left, that right shoulder, turning hard past the defense. She wanted it with the left hand. It's impossible to block. Fair to say she's been more decisive and therefore quicker getting to that move this year. She knows what she wants to do. She's got the confidence when she gets the ball, she knows she can score. And good from the free throw strike for Aaliyah Edwards. So nine points for Edwards, nine for Lopez Seneschal. Here's Aria Hurston, another freshman into the ball game, 20 for DePaul. Macerlane for three, yes. Maeve Macerlane on the board again for DePaul. Into Juhas who slips Morrow and gets the bucket. And that's another part of Edwards' game this year. She's a terrific passer as well. That'll be a backcourt violation. UConn basketball. You gotta get you gotta do the work before the ball comes in. Really good job by Juhas to put Morrow on the high side and a perfect pass, leading her to the basket from Edwards. That is already the seventh DePaul turnover in the game. There's Edwards from just inside the free throw strike. No, that's going to be off of Morrow and out of bounds. UConn basketball. Misa Morrow, five points, two of five shooting, four rebounds. Had double doubles in both games against UConn last season. One of those two games went down to the buzzer. The other, a UConn blowout here at Gamble. Floater in, couldn't get it to Juhas. That's just an impossible pass to try to complete. Morrow misses everything from outside. You know, it's an interesting part of Morrow's game this year, shooting the number of threes that she's shooting. And, and I think, you know, with shooting 42% from the floor, get down in the lane and, and shoot a high percentage shot, but it's hard work down there. Griffin loses control out of bounds. For DePaul, the whole complexion of the team has changed, right? Doug Bruno's teams were aggressive defense, a lot of front court pressure, full court pressure, and a lot of outside shots. They lost a lot of that perimeter scoring as Aaliyah Edwards gets the steal and the score. They lost a lot of that perimeter scoring after last season. Yeah, this is a completely different team than was then decimated by injury. Man, Edwards and Morrow really going at it in the paint. Here's Mackerlane cut off well by Lopez Seneschal. Peoples tend to shoot. Morrow stepped away from Edwards and got really the two. Really smart play by Morrow. I mean, part of the reason she may not want to work down low is because Edwards is really tough to play against in that low post. Smart just sneak up to the foul line. Final half minute of this opening quarter. Into Juhas. Morrow went for the steal, missed it. Juhas got the bucket. Oh, 
UConn can exploit that all night long. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Peoples for three, wide left. Griffin with the rebound. In traffic, will manage to keep the ball alive to get to the buzzer. Well, the battle in the paint has been entertaining to watch so far, and Isamoro leads DePaul with seven points, but Aaliyah Edwards into double figures already, 11 in the opening quarter. And Dorke Juhas with her share as well. She's got five, UConn, 27-18. There is the score as we get ready to start quarter number two. Huskies lead by nine. Check out our UConn Fan Choice poll presented by Duncan. Tonight, we're asking you, which player should be in the lead for Big East Player of the Year? We picked those three. Pretty, uh, three great choices, if you ask me. Uh, of course, Maddie, Maddie, yeah, yeah, she just became the all-time leading scorer in Villanova's history, male or female. You can't get to face Villanova this season, but uh, Edwards, Morrow, Segris. SNY.tv slash vote game. We look forward to hearing your thoughts. Interesting numbers from quarter number one. Points off turnovers, UConn 14, DePaul 2. And points in the paint, UConn 12, DePaul 4. You see the numbers on the junior, Aaliyah Edwards, already in the double figures, scoring in the first quarter. Uh, the numbers on Anissa Morrow in the game through one quarter. Lopez Seneschal patiently waits for the defender to fly by, misses the three. Edwards with the rebound. Doesn't get the putback. Here's Morrow on it. Nika Mule runs into Dorka Juhas, who's waiting there, and the rebound tipped by Lopez Seneschal. Huskies run. Blue pulls up. No. And the rebound tapped out of Juhas's hands by Morrow. It'll be UConn basketball. DePaul has done a really good job of taking away UConn's transition buckets. Mule to inbound with a 20-second shot clock for UConn. Steps inside, then Holmes reads back around and tap the ball away. We'll play Kendall Holmes, the junior from Plainfield, Illinois, 35. There's Peoples, gets around Edwards, all the way to the bucket. Missed it. He's looking for a foul call, didn't get it. Mule's lucky yet again to not pick up her second. Morrow saw that one coming. Yeah, she telegraphed it, it wasn't a good pass. Rogers tomorrow floats at high glass. That's just moving a little too quickly. It was the right idea by Mule. She just didn't execute it well. <laughs> had, the, had the big sigh and drop of the shoulders right in front of Coach as Coach expressed his opinions on the play. <laughs> his displeasure. Okay, Seneschal around and out. That's going to get knocked off no. of Morrow out of bounds. UConn basketball. Well, there is Jenna El Alfi, the six foot four inch now freshman from Cairo, Egypt, the first player from her country to be a member of the UConn women's basketball team. Arrived on campus Sunday, enrolled in classes Monday. Could you imagine what's going through her mind? Oh my goodness. Early enrollee, we do not expect her to play this season. No. There's Lopez Seneschal. No. Juhas with the rebound right to her. Yeah, Huskies have gone cold. For two from outside early in this quarter. Edwards drives. Got it. When in doubt, give it to Aaliyah Edwards. One of the things the Huskies talked about at shoot around pregame this afternoon drive to the bucket, be aggressive, taking it to the rim. There's a people missed off of Edwards' hands right to Morrow, who got the bounce. That's just unlucky Ethan for UConn and, and quite lucky for Morrow. She'll take them, and she can make them from there for sure. Yeah, you don't want to give her too many opportunities out of possession. Double figures for Morrow already. She's got 11. Seven point UConn lead. Ball through Yuha. She gathered it back up and put it in. There, that was a great pass from Yule. She fired it in. You can't lob anything against a good defensive team. No lazy passes. Oh, he's calling call. Edwards on a foul now. Leah? Yeah, and it's great drive. And then the ball just came out, came hot off the backboard, threw Edwards' hands right tomorrow, and then 
Edwards was just called for a foul. I thought she was denying Morrow nicely in the perimeter. Edwards goes for a spill, no foul called. Two bodies getting up off the floor far end. That is a three from outside, doesn't go. Edwards crashes the boards, but can't contain the rebound. Yeah, one kid almost fell because there was sweat on the floor. She slipped. That was Peoples who got back up and rejoined the play. Rogers over Juhas, yes. Heck of a play by Rogers. I thought Juhas no, 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 guarded no. that as well as she could. Just a great shot by Rogers. Going on Rogers. Edwards. Mule was wide open in the corner. And then her body language looked dejected that she didn't get it. Edwards from inside the free throw stride, yes. Edwards. Two more for Aaliyah Edwards. 15 now of UConn's 33. Rogers defended by Mule. Macrolane. Now Holmes. Over the top of an outstretched leaping Griffin missed. Lopez Seneschal and a nice pass from Mule. Timeout Time to Paul. UConn make it four of their last five, an 11 point Husky lead. UConn and DePaul meeting for the first of at least two this season. An 11-point Husky lead midway through quarter number two. Como's Court Vision, brought to you by Yale New Haven Health. You know, we talked about Aaliyah Edwards. Here she is on this possession. Watch how she moves without the ball, stays active. She feels it, right? She catches it, notices where the defense is, and drives right by. Now here she starts with the ball, and she's going to pass it. Careful, that's not a turnover next time, but watch when the ball goes to this side, she flashes hard, catch, turn, shoot. That's just really good offense. And I just love the purpose that she's playing with these days. The aggressiveness, the, the in control aggressiveness. Aliyah Edwards, 10th in the nation and the Big East leader in field goal percentage, not hurting that tonight. Look at that second set of numbers, seven of nine from the floor. Plus the four rebounds and three assists for Leah Edwards. So an 11 point UConn lead out of the DePaul timeout. Yeah, Bruno wanted to stop this UConn run a little bit. Holmes drives, travel. Good little shuffle and step. She, yeah, and she had Aubrey Griffin beat. But that's, you know, that's, a, it, she, it was in, in between her ears had the way she thought, you know, Griffin is so good athletically. She intimidated her a little bit and caused that turnover. Here's Griffin with the ball. Sloppy pass, intercepted by Holmes. And she'll draw the foul from Lopez Seneschal. The problem with that kind of a turnover, it's, a, it's an unnecessary turnover. Why do you make that pass, right? Like, that's just not a good pass. But then what happens now is a foul gets called on Seneschal, which she shouldn't be in that position. And that, you know, you just hope that that doesn't come back to bite them later. Again, we've seen games where the first half and second half have been called completely differently in terms of numbers of fouls. Kendall Holmes at the free throw strike for DePaul. Gets one to go. And it is a 10-point UConn lead. Juhas. That's a great flash. It's the shot. And Rogers with the rebound for DePaul. And that's the shot that they have to make. Lane wide, open. People missed the shot. The ball ended up in Aaliyah Edwards' hands. Maybe fortunate no foul call on UConn there, too. That is going to be a foul called on Aubrey Griffin for an illegal screen. How about the defense here by Edwards? Didn't commit the foul. Got to be careful coming down with those two hands. 
but that stayed with the play. She, you know, that's when I said the word relentless earlier. She just never gives up on a play. The conditioning to run both ways this year, offense, defense. Really impressive for Edwards. It's physical in there. Head snapping back, bodies hitting the floor. Players getting irritated with each other. And shots not getting made. I got a whistle as Gino is irate. Lopez Seneschal was laying down on the side of the court next to the play, and no fouls have been called. I think she got tripped or pushed. That's what Gino's reacting to. It comes down. It was it's it's physical. Everyone's frustrated. Didn't see anything. She fell, but it didn't look like. I want to get a better look at where she angle. landed. If anything, she could have been pushed by Edwards there. Uh, see, she thinks that the left knee. More lifted than he All right, so getting uh, the update on what they're checking over at the uh, replay table from official Jeffrey Smith. Going to look for an unobserved, possibly intentional foul. Correct. So we'll see what they come up with. The team said to their benches, and the officiating crew having a look. So watching the left leg potentially of Morrow here when she's down on the court. It didn't really look that she tried to trip her. Not enough for me for an intentional. No. If anything, like I said before, Amaro was pushed. No, from that angle, not at all. Yeah. But, you know, tempers are flaring. Well, it's going to be an intense game. Yeah, we do that. absolutely. You've got great competitors, two great coaches who happen to be great friends. Had dinner together last night. See, the tempers are flaring. And then this is where everyone's got to calm down. Take a deep breath. And this is one of those things, too. Remember the Georgetown game a couple of games ago, how it was officiated completely differently in the second half than the first, it felt like. But this is where the officials, you know, stop and say, hey, we're going to lose control of this thing if we don't get tighten it up. And you might see that going forward in this. Like Doug is saying, you got to be kidding me. So it looks like I don't know if they're going to give it to her. As happens in these reviews, two officials look at it, then one steps back and the third official goes in. See, the air's physical. They're both hitting each other. They're both, if anything, like I said before, that could have been a foul on UConn. It's close and it's tough, which is why it's taken the officials so long. Yeah. Yep. And so we wait and uh, see whether the determination is again I, you know for for me my opinion i didn't see enough there for it to be an intentional foul but certainly the game is getting tense and getting yeah, I physical mean, that was a foul and you know you could see her frustration maybe and then see that angle doesn't look like it at all yeah. it's a physical game so they finished looking at it now they'll huddle and come to the uh, the decision And I feel like we maybe should be hearing the, the theme from Jeopardy or something. <laughs> what is intentional foul? <laughs> or not? Now they'll tell the coaches, and then they'll come tell us. By Doug Bruno's face, it looks like they may give her no. nothing. Uh, the, way, the way Jeffrey Smith is carrying the ball down for UConn to inbound okay. on the basket, I don't think we'll get anything. Thank you. That would be the case. They don't see enough there to call that foul. And now the scores table needs to make the announcement. <laughs> and six or seven thousand referees chime in on yeah. their opinion. And you know what? I think the refs made the right call or no call, as it were. I agree. 
So we resume. Less than four and a half to go, and instantly bodies bang together in the paint. Nice cut from Aubrey Griffin, and she'll draw the contact. See, that's how they're going to make this game be less physical by calling that foul. Now, outstanding cut. Let's see, did Morrow hit her? Yeah, there was contact. Body to body. So that'll be her second. And send Aubrey Griffin to the free throw line. Two free throws. And Morrow will go out of the game with her second foul with 4.16 to go in this second quarter. Jory Allen comes back into the ball game for DePaul, already with two fouls. It's 33. And, you know, we talked a lot about how UConn decimated by injury. The same could be said for DePaul. They're coming off the bench with four true freshmen. Talk about learning on the fly. So Griffin good on the free throws, and the Huskies lead is 12. Holmes with the basketball for the ball. Here's Macrolane, one of those freshmen. Portion of deflection for the ball. Rogers. Shot clock in single digits. So try and get away from Mule Camp. Two, one, off the rim. Edwards with the rebound. Lopez Seneschal to Edwards. Patiently, uh, too patient. Extra step. Yeah, she did drag the foot. It was a great run. Terrific pass, but uh, just a little too much. So Doug Bruno quickly realizes he needs Anissa Morrow on the floor, so she gets sent back into the game with two fouls and three and a half minutes to go in this second quarter. You know, these are some of those risks that you have to take as a veteran coach. Morrow is a sophomore, but you hope she's smart enough to not, not commit the foul. How about the three by people? <laughs> Called glass. That breaks an 0 for 5 run for DePaul. Lopez Seneschal for three. No. Griffin, though, gets the offensive rebound. Goes right inside to Juhas. Makes space and gets the bucket. Really nice job by Juhas using her body to get in between the ball and the defender. Terrific play. Here's Peoples. Now Morrow puts up the three. No. Rebound knocked out of uh, the hands of Lopez Seneschal, but right to Mule. She pushes pace. Lopez Seneschal running end to end for the bucket. Nice pass by Mule. Nice job running the floor by Lopez Seneschal. Lopez Seneschal up to 13 now in this first half. There's Peoples for three. No. Mule gets the rebound. Mora way out high defending this time. So she, Edwards will feed it into Juhas and she'll draw the foul. I mean, that's a perfect pass when you don't have your... The recipient doesn't have to put the ball on the floor. Well-timed. Great effort by Lopez Seneschal, too. So here's Dorka Juhas at the free throw stripe. Now into double figures in this first half. Hey, if you're going to see UConn women's basketball's game against defending national champion South Carolina at the XL Center on February 5th, it's a whiteout. Make sure you wear white and be ready to get loud and cheer on the Huskies. What a fun atmosphere that'll be oh, at the XL goodness. Center. Wow. I think we've seen some intense post play tonight. <laughs> Should be just as fun that night, too. There's Holmes trying to get away from Edwards. Macrolane around and out from outside. Juhas will draw a foul on the rebound, and that is going to be the third on Jory Allen, and she can't believe it. Well, it, it may be kind of a ticky-tack call, but that's one way the officials are going to try to get control of this game and, and keep too many fouls and too much physicality. So Anissa Morrow comes back into the ball game, and Amari DeBerry comes off the bench for UConn. A way to extend the halftime break for Leah Edwards, who goes to the bench. And maybe a way to save maybe a foul or two. Yeah, and give DeBerry a chance to get in there. Bad pass. Oh, blocked by DeBerry. 
one way to make up for the turnover. You Haas way over the top of everything, but Aubrey Griffin hustles for the rebound. Minute and a half to go, second quarter. Newell rolls in to the berry. No. Just couldn't get that to fall. Griffin intercepts the pass, and she'll run out ahead of the pack. Just a heads-up basketball play by Audrey Griffin, and, and once again, her supreme athleticism. That is her third steal of the ball game for Griffin. Peoples underneath. Gets her own rebound. No, two shots at it. Ball falls into the hands of Lopez Seneschal. Gary Apple and Kara Walters standing by with all the first half highlights and analysis. It's the UConn Women's Basketball Halftime Show presented by Duncan. Coming up in another 40 seconds of game time. Barry sets the screen for Lopez Seneschal. That three well off. But Griffin gets the offensive board. Gets her own miss. Missed that one. And then we'll get called for the foul. That'll be the second on Griffin. As far as fouls are concerned, Griffin has two, Mule Lopez, Seneschal, and Edwards, one apiece as we close toward the end of this first half. The ball setting up the final shot. Here's Rogers. Five to shoot. Heaves it up over Mule. That'll miss everything. And time will expire as it falls harmlessly out of bounds. Well, Huskies end the second quarter on an 8-0 run over the last three minutes of the quarter. In the battle of the bigs in this one, the paint points decidedly in the favor of UConn, 24-6. And the halftime score here at Gamble Pavilion, UConn, 45 and DePaul, 28. And Lopez Seneschal and Aliyah Edwards leading the way for UConn on the scoreboard. Gino, a typical uh, physical UConn-DePaul game. Are you happy with the way your kids battled inside, particularly against a very physical Morrow? Yeah, I thought we did a great job um, on the defensive end. You know, I mean, for them to only get 28, you know, um, that's pretty darn good. Um, they are really hard, very difficult to guard. Um, you know, and sometimes, you know, we hurt ourselves because, you know, um, and there's no other way to say it, you know, the hardest shot to make in the world is a layup at Gamble Pavilion by the team that's usually wearing white. <laughs> So if we could figure out a way to uh, maybe get half of those to drop, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> All right, good luck the All second right. half. Yep. <laughs> Thoughts from the Hall of Famer, our interview with our halftime interview with Gino, presented by Duncan. Well, a lot of a uh, lot of highlights to talk about in this first half. Here's one of them: Aubrey Griffin with the steal and the score. Gary and Kara next with the halftime report. UConn led by nine after one, 17 at halftime, and we get ready to start the third quarter here inside Gamble Pavilion with Megan Cuomo. I'm Alan Bestwick. Maria Marino rejoins us shortly. So our battle of the bigs is how we started the night. Now let's talk about some of the outside shooting that helped to get UConn that 17-point lead. Well, yeah, Lou lopez Seneschal. I think she did a really good job of finding the open spots on the floor. You see her there, over there in that corner, and she was like, wait, hey, guys, I'm open. <laughs> Edwards gets her the ball. One of her three three-pointers. There she is. She liked that spot. Good movement away from the ball. That's a weakness, a weak spot of that DePaul zone defense. No doubt something that Doug Bruno was addressing with his DePaul squad. There are the first half numbers for Lou Lopez Seneschal for UConn as she and her teammates take the court for the third quarter. It's Lopez Seneschal, Griffin, Juhas, Mule, 
and Edwards. The five for Yukon, Peoples, McElrain, Morrow, Holmes, and Rogers. The five for DePaul. Rogers will get called for the foul. Wow, an offensive foul called. Interesting. Nice help there by Lopez Senechal. Yeah, the, the right shoulder was down, and that's a little bit a part of what they're, the refs are trying to do to maintain control. Yeah. Like we said a couple times in that second yeah, quarter, it'd be interesting to see. Early. There's a steal for Anaya Peoples, and she goes end-to-end -end for DePaul. Let's check in with Maria. Thanks, Alan. I caught Doug Bruno on his way to the locker room. He said he had two main points. One, you have to wait to get good shots, and two, we turned the ball over too much. Now, DePaul had only one more turnover than UConn in the half, but UConn scored double the points off turnover, 16 to DePaul's eight, although that just changed there with that uh, score by DePaul. All right, Maria, thanks. See how the Blue Demons try and execute some of those corrections. Here's Aaliyah Edwards, double teamed. Will get fouled. Really good take there by Edwards because she she recognized that she was being guarded so closely. And that's the confidence and the ball handling skills she has this year. Just go right by her. If they're up in your grill like that, dribble and go by. Aggressive. Take it aggressively. So the foul on Anaya Peoples, her first, and Aaliyah Edwards will step to the free throw line for UConn. Edwards a force from the floor in that first half for the Huskies with seven of nine from the floor and 15 points. Now adding to that from the free throw line. Amazing how quiet Gamble Pavilion has gotten. Curtis, courtesy for the home team, wow. the free throw shooter. Yeah. I have all kinds of snarky things I could say there, but I won't. <laughs> Probably good to know. Maybe professors watching saying they're not that quiet in my class. <laughs> There's a foul on Aaliyah Edwards. That'll be her second. So Anissa Morrow will shoot free throws for DePaul. Morrow, five of 11 in the first half, one of four from outside, 11 points, eight rebounds. And those same students not <laughs> yeah. quite as quiet now. Yeah, free throws down the other end, the place gets very quiet. Down here, in front of the student <laughs> section, not so much. And that's what the students are supposed to do. It's great. And as an opposing player, you love it. You know, you want to make the shot to shut them up. One of two for Morrow on that. And a 16-point UConn lead. Nice slash to the basket, basket by Griffin. Outstanding read by Griffin, and what a pass from Lopez Seneschal. To Paul, definitely in more of a deny defense to start this half. McElaine couldn't get the ball inside, but that's going to be a foul. You notice the blue jersey. See that the kid came up? And then what a read by Griffin. Check that. That wasn't a foul call. That was a signal to set 20 on the shot clock. Yeah, I think Lopez Seneschal kicked it. Here's Morrow driving on Edwards, and a foul call. That's going to be on Morrow. She led with that arm. And I bet you Morrow's a little bit frustrated. Let's see. She takes it. Nice job taking it. Let's see it from this angle. Watch that right arm. I mean, the right arm stayed in. Did she dip her shoulder? Maybe. Well, they decree that Aaliyah Edwards had legal guarding position, so the third foul on Morrow early in this third quarter. Lopez Seneschal gets fouled. Who is this on? They call that on Kendall Holmes. So that's her second. So Morrow with three fouls early in the third yeah and Bruno's not making a move to take her out and you know that's the, the tough question you have to trust you know your you know last year's freshman of the year in the Big East one of the best players in the country you have to trust her they're decimated by injury like UConn is yeah and if you take her out who are you gonna put in both three throws good by Lopez Seneschal yeah the problem is Jory Allen the other experienced player on the team 
She picked up three fouls in the first half. And, and Jory, Jory Allen, while she's great tough, great rebounder, nice block oh, by oh, oh. And nodding at the student section. Saying, uh-huh. That's the way to get the students even more fired up. Good footwork, nice block. Hmm. Here is Rogers on Juhas. She'll step back. No. Gets her own miss. And misses that. But Macrolane will get the offensive board. Rogers again. She and Lopez Seneschal get tangled up. No foul. Aubrey Griffin runs and scores. Marion Rogers just shaking her head. There's Macrolane. No. Griffin. What a rebound by Griffin yet again. She came from well outside the paint to get that. Here's Edwards. Driving, feeds you, Haas. Nice. Terrific pass. Those two are really good together, Edwards and you, Haas. Time out to Paul as UConn goes on an 8-0 run over the last minute and a half. Dorka Juhas right in front of the UConn student section with the emphatic rejection. Saying, yeah, you see what I did there, uh-huh. <laughs> Largest lead of the ball game for the Huskies by 24 over DePaul. Aliyah Edwards leads all scorers. You know, and, and she's done it in so many different ways. Great strong moves to the basket. Doesn't get called for the foul there, thankfully for UConn. Doesn't give up on the play, finishes. Aubrey Griffin's miss. And it's that, you know, that 17-footer that's become just such a consistent part of her game and tremendous defense stepping in the, the passing lane and scoring on that fast break. And Anissa Morrow didn't even run back past half court after Edwards stepped in and stole the ball. That's disappointing to see. And that is not disappointing to see if you're a UConn fan. That score line on Aaliyah Edwards tonight. UConn out, rebounding to Paul. And in this third quarter, UConn three for three from the floor. To Paul, one for five. So see what Doug Bruno has drawn up out of the timeout here for his Blue Demons. Jory Allen back into the ball game. 33 for DePaul has the basketball. Great defense there by Aubrey Griffin denying. Morrow tried the three. No, Yuha skies for the rebound. Lopez Seneschal ahead of the pack. Missed the layup. Edwards with the putback. Who else? Aliyah Edwards. And vigorous applause from Gino Oriema on the bench after yeah. that hustle play from Edwards. McElwain with the ball. Now Allen. She'll let the three go. Sure. UConn's run now up to 10 0. Juhas working in with the left hand off the glass. Just such a smart play down low, bringing the defense up to the left and then coming back hard over her right shoulder. Pretty use of the left hand. Gonna be a foul inside on Edwards as she and Morrow jostled for position. You know, it's so physical to watch Edwards score and then watch these two. Look at that. It is a physical game in there. And then Morrow just throw a little shot at Aubrey Griffin, too. Lots of shots being thrown. Nothing called until Edwards got a hand inside of the arm of Morrow, and they called her for the foul. That's her third. Juhas will get fouled inside. And if that's on Allen, that's her fourth. And it is. So the foul total's adding up here for DePaul. Doug Bruno will wave at his bench for 
one of the freshmen to come in for Jory Allen. Goes to the bench. Zaria Hurston comes in for DePaul. Freshman from Decatur, Georgia. So here is Dorka Juhas at the free throw strike. Juhas with double doubles in four of the last five games and six of the last ten since she returned from being out with that thumb injury. Another player who, you know, we talk a lot about Aaliyah Edwards and her consistency. Dorka Juhas' consistency has been critical, especially with so many players hurt. Uh, Griffin got the steal, but couldn't control it before the ball, the ball hit the sideline, and it'll be DePaul basketball. They're going to have to make an adjustment to the timer because they're going to say that Griffin never had possession. So it will be 24 on the shot clock, and Aubrey is looking for maybe, what, some moisture on the floor or a contact or something? stop it here while Janelle Francisco goes and gets something to deal with whatever that issue is the UConn medical trainer that uh, looks like a spot of baby blood on the floor is what they'll have to clean up and so you got to glove up yeah, and all that other kind about, of thing for yeah, safety. You, you talk about a physical game there's <laughs> yeah. drops of blood on the floor yeah and now everyone the ref is having everyone check yeah got to find out where it came from Don't see, um, we don't see any obvious signs of blood on the floor, so it'll be DePaul basketball, 24 to shoot. Of blood on, of people on the floor, better said. From outside, Peoples, no. And Mule, the only one there for the rebound. Six assists on the night for Mule, yet to score. Juhas into Edwards, quickly to the basket. That's unstoppable. Such good position down low by Edwards, knowing that the defender could not stop her. A 16-0 UConn run over the last three and a half minutes. This first in, feeds inside the Morrow, aggressively to the rim, no. Good crash for the rebound from Peoples. And that will be turned over on steps. Timeout. The media timeout halfway through quarter number three. Brings Doug Bruno out to midcourt to argue with the officials. There's no arguing with the performance of Aaliyah Edwards tonight. 21 points for the junior. So UConn building its largest lead of the night. 32 the gap now over DePaul. Wow. And earlier we asked you, our UConn fan choice poll presented by Duncan, who you thought the leader should be for Big East Player of the Year. I, I'm not shocked at this since we're asking UConn fans, really. Absolutely. I'm mean, not, and not <laughs> to take anything away from the phenomenal year that Aaliyah Edwards has had. Right. But uh, she has backed that up with her performance tonight. We set this game up as uh, almost like a, a wrestling grudge match in the paint. <laughs> and okay. Edwards has been a force tonight. Let's check in with Maria. Thanks, Alan. Gino in that huddle said, I don't think we have to run and make layups right now. We're up about 30 points. Let's practice our offense. So look for that here, guys. All right, wanted to run some half court here. Well, at halftime, he was not happy over the number of layups that they did miss. Held ball. UConn possession. I have to say, held ball. And uh, the UConn's with 19 to shoot. Just six players have been in the ball game for UConn tonight, and Amari DeBerry's only been in for a couple of minutes. The five starters have done most of the work, though Aaliyah Edwards is on the bench now. And DeBerry back in. There's Lou. Didn't get the foul call, didn't get the bucket. Morrow inside. Allen around DeBerry, no. Really good defense by DeBerry. Heads up play there by Juhas to save the ball. So the 16-0 UConn run continues. Lopez Seneschal for three. She has been locked in from long range all night long. 
Morrow inside, DeBerry there to cut her off. Really smart play by DeBerry. Just kept her hands up, didn't commit the foul. Arms came straight in, up. Yeah, came away with the loose ball. Miscommunication there. Juhas and Lopez Seneschal, and that's going to be a foul on Juhas. So this is what you have to do. Come in off the bench and play good defense. And, you know, it's those long, outstretched arms. You don't realize how huge Amari DeBerry is. She's at 6'5". She's got those long arms. And there's Ayanna Patterson getting ready to check back into the ball game for the first time after missing the last four in concussion protocol. Yeah, and, and that was heavily emphasized the UConn's post players today. Don't try to block the shot, just get straight up. Make them shoot over you. Morrow tries to shoot over you, Haas. Missed, Rogers gets the offensive board. That is gonna be a foul on Rogers. Offensive foul for DePaul, her second. Got a big grin out of Nika Mule, I'll tell you that. Who Rogers committed the foul on. Doug Bruno is not happy and having his say. So Lopez Seneschal goes to the bench with 18 points in this one. And Ayanna Patterson back in the ball game for UConn. Got a nice ovation from the home crowd. Sure. Sets the screen. DeBerry over the outstretched Morrow. No, Rogers gets the rebound. Morrow goes right to the rim, blocked by DeBerry. That was such a good move by Morrow, so quick when she turns, but talked about the long arms of DeBerry. What a good block by DeBerry defensively. Morrow gets the ball on the inbound play and gets the two there. That is 14 for Anissa Morrow. Only player for DePaul in double figures. DeBerry tries to go in to Griffin. Nice save out to Mule. No, DeBerry with the rebound and the putback. In the right place at the right time. Terrific position there by DeBerry. There's a long range three from Darion Rogers. No, and Dorka Juhas will get the rebound. She's got to be approaching double double territory. That'll be her eighth rebound with 17 points. Patterson, defender fell down, kicked over to Griffin, no. Tipped back into the basket. That was by Morrow. <laughs> Anissa Morrow tipped the ball. Georgia puts her hands up. I don't know if she's going to get credited there. And Morrow is down on the floor. Let's hope she's not hurt. So you watch the ball come off. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was more. <laughs> look at Dorka Juhas' reaction. I don't know. Well, Nika Mule goes to the bench, and an Esh Betancourt comes into the ball game for UConn. First time we've seen the freshman tonight. So all eight available players for this game for the Huskies are on, have been on the floor. Macrolane gets it to go. Maybe Macrolane played in her first game for DePaul New Year's Eve. Missed the first half of the season after a knee injury she suffered in her senior year of high school. And she's been um, a long-awaited debut player for Doug Bruno. Oh, yeah, the pride of Philadelphia. Played for a great AAU program, the Comets. A lot of great players have come out of that area. Yep, the very fumbled that one, got it back. Six to shoot. Griffin, does she see it? Yes. Got the bucket and the foul. I thought they were going to call that a charge. First foul on McElroy. Bobby Griffin, one free throw. Paige Beckers loves it. A little bench reaction. So here's Aubrey Griffin at the free throw line. Missed that one. 
UConn has been very good for the free throw strike tonight, though. About 80%. Here's Morrow. The quick turnaround over to Barry. No. Aubrey Griffin gets the rebound. Actually, Patterson will wind up with it and then throw it away. Now, moments here with still another quarter to play for experience for some of these younger players as Griffin runs into traffic. That'll be a tied-up ball. It'll go to DePaul on the alternating possession arrow. And UConn with a massive 37-point lead. Here is Allen as we get into the final 30 seconds of this third quarter. Morrow from way outside over the top of a lunging to Berry. Allen will get the rebound. McElaine. Now Allen, that's for three. Jory Allen, only the 15th three she's attempted this year. And that goes. Betancourt, end to end, hits the side of the backboard as time runs out in the third quarter. Well, UConn outscoring DePaul 27-13 in the third. Husky 72-41. Ready for the fourth quarter here at Gamble Pavilion. Our game reset presented by your local New England Honda dealers. So, uh, Nisa Morrow against Aaliyah Edwards in the paint tonight. You see the numbers for both players. UConn out rebounding to Paul. And uh, it's not just Ben Edwards for UConn. Dorka Juhas, Lou Lopez Seneschal also with a lot of points tonight. Let's focus on Juhas here for a minute. Well, you know, Dorka has played so well physically, getting in the right place, using her body. To get the defense where she wants them and then she can do something with the ball when it comes in. Look at that, gets her body in between the ball and her defender. And she's doing it on the defensive end as well. And then getting the crowd involved a little bit, having some fun with the student section. And you know, it's been a physical game at halftime. We saw she had some white gauze in her nose from yeah. what would appear to be some sort of a bloody nose. Now, Juhas will start this fourth quarter on the bench. One rebound shy of another double-double. And there you see uh, the bloody towel yeah, as well. Yeah, she keeps looking for it. So 31-point UConn lead as we go to the fourth. Betancourt, Patterson, Edwards, DeBerry, and Lopez Seneschal, the five on the floor for UConn. Here's Patterson against Morrow. As it's stripped away, good reach in there by Peoples. And down on the floor is Jory Allen reaching for her left leg. And hate to see that. And this is a kid who's banged up all the time. She's missed lots of games with various injuries. And you just hope she's OK. Didn't play the second half of two of their last three games. Didn't play at all their last game against St. John. But looks like she's staying in the game. And so will UConn will inbound the basketball with eight to shoot. Edwards, double teamed to the Berry. Passes to Lopez Seneschal, who gets it with one on the shot clock. Lopez Seneschal looks shocked that DeBerry passed through the ball, particularly with so little time on the shot clock. That is 20 points for Lou. Couldn't pull the ball in there for the steal. Here's McElaine for three. No. Patterson with a rebound. Edwards drives and scores. Athletic finish showing her upper body strength. 76-41 UConn. There's Anissa Morrow, the nice floater for two. That's going to be 16 points for Morrow tonight with eight rebounds. Last game, Anissa Morrow has not had a double-double in. It was December 21st against Louisville, 17-5. and five. Edwards drives and slips everybody and missed the bucket. She got lucky when that play first started. She did push off with the left arm and they didn't call it. 76-43 UConn, Edwards tries to get the steal, bodies on the floor, that'll be DePaul basketball. 
Check out our Take It to the Rim moment brought to you by Duncan. Look at this nice, strong take. Oh, double pump. Leah Edwards tonight, game leading 23 points. 10 of 13 from the floor. How about that efficiency in such a physical ball game? One of the leaders in field goal percentage in the entire nation, adding to those numbers tonight. So Amari DeBerry goes to the bench for a breather. DeBerry, two points, one of three. A couple of rebounds, a couple of blocks. I thought really good minutes for DeBerry off the bench here tonight. Yes, especially against the, the level of inside play that she's faced. Yeah. Made some really good decisions defensively. Rebounded the ball, altered some shots. Didn't try to do too much. Eight to go in this one. Okay, Seneschal, a pass was stolen coming into her. Here's Kendall Holmes. Patterson comes back. Talk about athleticism. Ayanna Patterson, wow. Court, slips the defense and gets on the scoreboard. I got the bench up. Maybe working toward one of those Nika Mule Everybody Eats score sheets tonight. Carry on Rogers. Long distance to Macrolane. No. Nice play by Bettencourt to slap the rebound away and kept running. She deserved that. Timeout to Paul. Ines Betancourt on her personal scoring run for the Huskies. Slips the defense to get one, then the smart tap and the effort to keep hustling. 80 to 43 Huskies. UConn's lead up to 37 points with seven to go in the ball game here at Gamble Pavilion in what's been a very physical game against the ball. You know, you can't say enough about Aaliyah Edwards and the way she has worked. Check out how physical this battle is between these two. Aaliyah Edwards and Anissa Morrow. It has been so tough, so competitive. Man, what a grind, right? I mean... I guess if you don't get called for a foul, I guess it's not considered <laughs> illegal. But, there's, you know, it's a physical game, and the, the key is you got to keep your head. Uh, you know that coming in, right? Morrow is a very physical yeah. player. She's going to make you be physical against her. So, Aaliyah Edwards with the mask off, perhaps done for the game. I, I give, I just want to say one thing. I give Aaliyah credit. Aaliyah. Edwards, so much credit for maintaining her composure and not getting carried away and getting frustrated with the physicality. Griffin with the rebound on the DePaul miss. Huskies with big numbers. Get it to the Berry. She'll let it go. Aubrey Griffin with a double double tonight. Aaliyah Edwards with a double double tonight. And still six and a half to go. Morrow defended by DeBerry. Peoples kicks to Holmes. Three too strong. Betancourt. Nice position for the rebound. Nice box out there by Betancourt. Get it inside to Patterson, who gets on the scoreboard. And another timeout for DePaul. An 8-0 run for UConn in a brief burst of score time. for this UConn team in the midst of what Gina Oriama has called what will be their toughest stretch of the season, five games in 11 days. Just played Saturday, here they are Monday night playing a very physical, tough DePaul team. And look at that score line. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, right? The energy, and, and these kids, you know, we talk all season long about their resiliency, but they are just a special group. They, they don't overlook anybody at any time. They don't quit playing at any time, regardless of the score. And Griffin with another rebound. You can see just looking at the group, too. We, we obviously 
fortunate enough to travel with the team and, and be at the arena when, when the doors are closed. You would talk about team chemistry. This is a tight, tight group. Here's Griffin. Whoa! How about Aubrey Griffin? Doing some work in the low post. We don't see Griffin make a lot of back to the basket moves like this, but wow. Great job feeling where the defense was and spinning accordingly. 14 and 11 for Griffin tonight. This is the extra there. Morrow with the rebound. That's going to put Morrow into double double territory. run for UConn over the last just less than two minutes of game time. Patterson got a shot in there, blocking someone, trying to make a cut. People drives, knocked away. <laughs> Nika, she never stops, right? So just six to shoot here for DePaul. Rogers. In tomorrow, the quick turnaround missed wide left. Again, having to shoot over that long arms, arm, outstretched arm of DeBerry, not easy to do. And just come back and reinforce your point from earlier, Meg. Really quality minutes tonight from Amari DeBerry against terrific. a very tough post yeah, player. Terrific minutes. Going to get called yeah. for the foul there. <laughs> <laughs> she was right in front of us. She looked at the ref like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you got me there. Some news with Katie Lou Samuelson. Yeah, she's going to would be the director of player development at Vanderbilt. Or a uh, longtime UConn assistant, now head coach at Vanderbilt, Shay Ralph. Enjoy Kyla Irwin, a good friend of hers, who's also there, Kevin DeMille, all of whom were a part of this program. Great people. Shay's doing great things down there. More injuries and oh. whatnot that they're dealing with. It seems like every team is dealing with it. Look at Griffin. Wow. Turn the corner with the afterburners on. Holmes. No. And Bettencourt will have that rebound. Yeah, a little bit of a Yukon family tree forming up down there in Nashville. And we wish Ralph and company well. Patterson on the floor, gonna get out of bounds off her. There's Katie Lou Samuelson. Four final four appearances, national champion, 2,000 points, 600 rebounds, 400 assists. Only four people have done it in program history. And, and a great, great kid. I'm a little biased, though, having been number 33. Yeah. <laughs> she'll be, always hold a special place in my heart. Sure. Morrow. No. Ooh, hard on the floor. Ball's going to cross the end line, and that'll be DePaul basketball. Mule. Fortunately, up. It looked like she went to grab her ankle when she was down there on the floor. Maybe that's also a pretty solid tailbone landing yeah. to the way she's flexing. Just under four minutes to go in this one. You hate to say it, but at this point in this season, what you want now for these last four minutes, get everybody out of here healthy. Yeah, both teams. Yep. Morrow over to Barry. No. Good crash by Griffin, but couldn't contain it, and out of bounds it goes. <laughs> ah, there's 33. Is that the original? Were you the original 33? I don't know about that. I think that's the, the original water bottle that it was ever made. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Still fun to see. Oh, with the hard screen on Mule. Roger shot short. Patterson couldn't contain it. And they'll have a foul as Morrow went up. They'll call it on Mule. And um, she doesn't see it. <laughs> but does she ever? Naturally. Anissa Morrow with 16 points and 11 rebounds in this one. She averages 25 points in those 11 rebounds.
And you have to give a lot of credit to Aliyah Edwards, Dorka Juhas, even Aubrey Griffin rotating in there, and of course Amari DeBerry. Yeah, they've all done a phenomenal job, and, and Gino talked about it, that the kid could get 50, and if they do a good job guarding her, she could still end up with 35. Yeah. So to be where she is right now with 17 is pretty good. Great team effort. So three and a half to go in this ball game. Ewell will draw contact and foul. She's gonna be on Kendall Holmes, her fourth. And into the ball game comes Tara Day, another one of those freshmen for DePaul. Again, joining us late, the storyline for the Blue Demons is five starters, all with experience, four players on the bench, all true freshmen. Here's one of UConn's true freshmen, Patterson. Sets the screen for Mule. Now Betancourt sets the feet. No, Patterson with the rebound. DeBerry drives. Nice touch move, but the shot didn't fall. Day cut off by Griffin. Macrolane. Now to Morrow. Over Patterson. Short. And UConn will slow it down. Nika Mule tonight. No points. Only took one shot, but nine assists, six rebounds. who had the lane. Unselfishly gave it up. Very no. Patterson with a big rebound, then gets fouled. That'll be on Darion Rogers. No, that's, excuse me, that'll be on Zaria Hurston. Well, here's that road ahead we talked about, that toughest stretch of the season for UConn. They go to Tennessee. They play the balls in Knoxville on Thursday. Then Villanova comes to Hartford on Sunday. That'll be a tough one. On the road to Providence, then number one South Carolina comes to town, and the road trip to Milwaukee and Marquette, never an easy game. Chino said it, their toughest stretch of their season is right now. So here is Ayanna Patterson at the free throw line. First game back for UConn after missing the last four. And as Gino talked about heading into this tough stretch, getting good minutes from Patterson and DeBerry and Betancourt was going to be critical to this team and their success through this stretch. I would call tonight a really good effort. I think for all of them, but particu particularly for Patterson. Yep. And on the floor for 11 minutes, four points, four rebounds. Inside, that's going to be Day, and she's going to get fouled. That'll be Aubrey Griffin who picks up the foul, her third. Well, tell us, tell us, Meg, what what's impressed you most? about this effort for UConn tonight? Well, to put up 90 points and to right now to have DePaul in the 40s, I, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. But, you know, Aaliyah Edwards, yeah, you have to talk about the effort that she, that she put out here tonight. She did an outstanding job defensively, offensively, but I like her composure. Yep. I really do. And, and it's not easy when you play a team that's really physical. And, you know, we saw, we showed a lot of the shots of them. Look at the shots that they were given. The bumps, the hits. Nice move by Patterson. How'd you get that through? Yeah, the to composure. Keep your composure yes. and not get taken away with, let your, your mind, you know, you just gotta maintain some calm. Don't get too angry and just play. First and misses, Mule and Day fight for the rebound. Mule will come up with it and get it stolen. And she will foul Morrow. After not getting the call she was looking for. Well, see, uh, that's what I'm talking about. You can't get so frustrated because you think you just got fouled. Yep. And then what do you do? You commit a foul. And there Mule got caught, and I just think Aliyah Edwards did a great job all night of not getting taken away with that stuff. And, and in a game where UConn wanted to control the paint. As Morrow heads to the bench for 
DePaul and her final line on the night will be 20 points and 12 rebounds, but 8 of 26 from the floor and 1 of 6 from outside. Yeah, she had to work for that 20. On a night when UConn wanted to control the play in the paint, points in the paint tonight, 56-18 for UConn and counting. Yeah, make it 58. Nice cut there by Aubrey Griffin yet again. Kick it outside, Hurst in, around and out. Patterson will get another rebound. So inside of a minute to go in this one, Huskies going to remain unbeaten in Big East play. They'll go to 11-0, 18-2 on the season. And the tough stretch since the new year started for DePaul will continue. They lost five of their last six coming in. And they will now go to 4-6 and six in Big East play and 11-10 and on the season. Shot clock running down. Newell will take it to the rim, but miss the rim. That'll be a turnover to DePaul. Final 10 seconds here at Gamble. On a snowy night, fans that came out to watch their Husky team play have to be warmed by the performance. UConn puts up 90 tonight, 94 to 51 is the final score. The two good friends meet for the handshake. But one will leave the game much happier than the other for sure. Be a long trip back to Chicago for DePaul. And for UConn, a very, very positive night to head down to Knoxville to play Tennessee off of. Player of the game tonight presented by CSCU. It's got to be Aaliyah Edwards, right? 23 points to lead UConn with 10 rebounds to go along with it, and that doesn't even begin to talk about her defensive efforts. Yeah, she played a, an outstanding game and against a, a really physical opponent. She stepped up to the challenge. So Aaliyah Edwards, our player of the game, her ninth double-double of the season and her 10th 20-point game in this campaign. And uh, if you're looking for statement games to say, hey, look at me, for All-American status, this was one for Edwards. Maria Marino is with Gino. Hey, Coach, you told me if you play tough defense on Morrow, she could still score 35. So how do you think uh, you guys did containing her? Well, I think we did a hell of a job on her, uh, you know, considering that she's just so hard. I mean, she's, she's so physical and she plays... Come on, you know, inside, outside, she shoots it. She goes after every rebound. Uh, it's it's just really, really, really difficult for for one person to guard her. So we really had to work, you know, make it a team defensive thing, you know. But uh, we can't can't do it any better than that the way we did it today. And you got some nice contributions from your bench. Were you encouraged by what you saw? Yeah, um, as I've been saying, you know, everybody that we put on the floor has to just bring something. You know, they don't have to go in there and, you know, be spectacular. They just have to be solid, you know, and, and that's what we're getting right now. You know, we're getting solid contributions from all of them. Uh, they really bought into all their roles. You know, this is what I do. This is what I am. And it's been... You know, it's been working, and we have to stay with it the rest of the season. You talked about this being the toughest stretch of the season. You have Tennessee coming up. What do you work on the next couple of days? Thank you, Thank you, Welcome. Well, rest tomorrow, lots of it. And then, uh, you know, Tennessee's athleticism, their size, you know, they're, they're, they're just a really prop, big problem to play against. Uh, but... You know, we faced some of that already, and um, uh, it's just another great game. And, you know, after that, we got a bunch of them. So it's never ending, and we'll just go down there and do what we do and hope it's good enough. <laughs> All right, Coach, thanks for the time. All right, thanks, Maria. Huskies out rebound. The Blue Demons 59 32. They dominate play in the paint and wind up with a 43 point win over to Paul. More to come from Gamble in just a minute. UConn a winner.